In this video, we will explore JavaScript decision statements, in particular the if statement and the switch statement. What you see before you is Internet Explorer with a very basic web page displayed. It's running on my local computer. As you can see, all that the page contains is a select statement with multiple options. So now that we have our basic structure, we can talk a little bit about working with JavaScript to manage decision statements. These statements can become a little tricky to troubleshoot if you have debugging disabled in your browser. And it so happens that Internet Explorer disables debugging by default. So we're going to see what happens with debugging off, and then we're going to enable debugging and see the difference. To begin, I'm going to create what is called a script tag block in the header section of my page. It's within the script block that I can inject JavaScript. So I'm simply going to enter an alert command to display a message box. And in this case, I'm going to have the alert say, hello, and I'm putting the statement within double quotes and entering a semicolon to end the line. And I choose save, and I go back to my browser, and I refresh, and we see our message box. So that's JavaScript that's valid. But what if we want to break the JavaScript to see what happens with debugging disabled? In that case, I'm going to remove the second quotation, save the file, go back to my browser, refresh, and we see nothing, no error, no message. That's again because debugging is disabled. So to enable debugging, I'm going to choose this little button, since my browser is so reduced you can't see the whole toolbar. I'm going to choose this button, and, uh, and over to the right, I'll move it over a little bit here, to the right we can see tools, and then I'm going to choose internet options. It opens up a panel, and on this panel there's an advanced tab. So when I click advanced, we can see that there are multiple categories of settings, and under browsing, there are two settings which we wish to change. We have disabled script debugging for Internet Explorer and disabled script debugging for other. So these settings really apply to multiple browsers on this computer. I'm going to uncheck each option. And then what I'm going to do is click Apply or OK. Apply would let me stay in the panel. I'm clicking OK. And now what I'm going to do is refresh my page. When I refresh the page, now there's a big difference. We see an error message appear. It asks us if we wish to debug. It says unterminated string content or constant. The debugging option will behave differently depending on what your settings are on your local computer or what software is installed. We're simply going to choose no in this case, but it's very helpful to us to see that it says unterminated string constant. That's a very technical way of saying that we have a string, which is a constant value. Or, or a static value, which means it isn't expected to change by the script, but we did not terminate it, which is by placing that character. So now we have a capable way of debugging when something is wrong in our script. With that described, we're going to move forward and take a look at if statements. An if statement is simply a way of making a decision in a JavaScript f program to have one or more courses of actions based on conditions that we find. So, for example, I'm going to create a variable that we're going to make a decision based on. And I will declare it by using the var statement, var, and then I'm going to call the var, uh, let's just say, uh, my color. And we'll set it equal to a string value. So we'll, we'll enter my color equals blue. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, remove the alert statement since it's no longer useful. And in its place, I will enter an if statement. If statements have a very standard form in JavaScript. The form follows if, lowercase of course, followed by an open and closed parenthesis, and then actions to take based on if the statement is true. Now at this point, I would recommend going a bit further and using what's called a block statement, which is an open and closed curly brace to represent what happens if the if statement condition is passed? This is recommended because as you work with more complex if statements, those, those block characters become more critical. So if you always use them, you're going to have a more understandable code routine and you can be certain that whatever code follows the if either does or does not happen within the designated condition. 
So let's say that we want to find out what my color is defined as. So we will say, like perhaps it came from another program or was passed in as a parameter to a function. So it, it, we're only simplifying things by showing it as a variable here. So what I'll enter is if my color, and again I have to watch to be case sensitive, and I can't enter equals blue because that would simply set the variable my color to blue and confuse the if statement. So there's something called a comparison operator in an if statement. This is really vital. You need to use two equal signs. So this actually says if my color is equal to blue, then you can have something happen. So we could have an alert message appear, and we could actually pass in this string, the my color variable, as an argument to the alert statement. So we could enter my color and save and refresh. And there it says blue. So let's say we go back and we change my color to red and rerun our page and the statement is being evaluated. No message. Well, let's say that we want to know what's in that variable. Uh, since it's obviously not blue, it helps us to know what it is. Well, one other w option in an if statement is to use an else condition. So this would be a case where we're saying if the color is equal to blue, then show this alert saying the color. Or we could have an else statement if the color is not blue, then take another action. So what I'm going to do to make this a little more understandable is, is have this just simply say alert the color is blue. And then I'm going to ha enter an else statement. If you see it, it follows the closing curly brace of the first condition. And then we start a new curly brace group so we can enter new code in between those braces. So in this case, I'm going to enter alert the color is something else and save and again we have our debugging enabled so that should tell us right away if something's broken in our script here it says the color is something else so let's say we want to know what the color is well there are a few ways we could do that one would be to concatenate the variable my color onto the end of this alert statement so what we could do is maybe make the statement make a little more sense we could say the color is get rid of the extra words and to concatenate, meaning to combine two strings into one in JavaScript, you use a plus character, a plus sign. So we enter the color is plus my color, again watching that we're using the right upper and lowercase characters, and we'll save, and we'll refresh, and it says the color is red. Now so far what we've shown is how to use an if statement to make a decision based on a value on the left and the criteria for which for the passing the condition on the right. We could also have an opposite if statement condition. We could say if my color is not equal to blue, and that would be an exclamation point followed by an equal sign. So now what we would say is we would simply reverse the alert statements in this case. So I'm going to move them around. And now when we run, we're going to get an opposite effect. I'm going to change it back to blue. So if you're with me, we're going to look and make, see what happens if the color is not blue. So what we're expecting to happen is to see alert else the color is blue. And it did in fact know that the color is blue. Now an, another consideration with JavaScript and if statements is case sensitivity. What we mean by this is that the lowercase statement blue is being evaluated against the, this lowercase statement blue. So, so both variables, or the variable, I'm sorry, the variable and the statement are both lowercase blue. So I'm changing this to uppercase blue. And what we should see happen is that the comparison will fail. And in this case, what we have achieved is to show that the color is not equal to uppercase blue it could be anything else, it could be lowercase blue. But the case sensitivity matters. So I'm going to set it back to lowercase blue. And maybe we'll just make this make a little more sense. Lowercase blue. And I'll save. And I'll refresh the page. And as you can see from the alert box, it's case sensitive. So what we have just explored is working with an if statement and an else condition. And we've also looked. This concludes part one. Part 2 will focus on the JavaScript switch statement.